Hubble Power Systems has been manufacturing high-voltage surge arresters for over 70 years. Surge arresters protect power utility equipment from damage by high-voltage sources such as lightning strikes. The component critical for the arrestor to work is the MOV, the heart of the surge arrestor. The MOV, or metal oxide varistor, is a disc or block of crystalline semiconductor material made from zinc oxide. A varistor can instantly change its resistance to voltage from high resistance during everyday operation to low resistance if a lightning strike threatens nearby. An MOV can survive lightning strikes over and over so that power grid equipment is never affected. To manufacture an MOV requires state-of-the-art technology to incorporate additives into a crystal matrix that gives an MOV special electrical properties. Hubble Power Systems acquired the Ohio Brass Company in 1978 and has produced millions of MOV discs since then for millions of surge arresters on the power grid. Ohio Brass had a long legacy of advancing arrestor design and development, beginning with the early era of silicon carbide technology back in the 1950s. As new MOV technology proved superior to silicon carbide, Ohio Brass invested in new facilities to mass produce MOV discs. Today, Hubble engineering teams fully control the design and manufacture of MOV discs in close proximity to the design and development of the arresters they make up. By working next to each other, Hubble design engineers team up to meet continuous improvement goals and synchronize rapid development cycles for both MOVs and surge arresters. An MOV is a collection of millions of microscopic electronic switches that are basically programmed all to come on at a given signal. The MOV is designed to take excess energy to ground to protect very expensive equipment in the electric power distribution and transmission systems. It's very important because the MOV, again, is that collection of millions of microscopic switches. If you don't deliver the materials to every one of those switches in the right ratios, the right quantities, then that switch isn't going to behave like the ones around it and we're going to get performance that's not to the level we expect. Looking at the quality of a Hubble MOV versus our competition, you're going to see consistency and reliability in our products. We have our design team right across the aisle from us that designs the arresters that these blocks are put into. So we have that really close touch with our design team. That allows us work back and forth to improve our product and look at the long-term reliability and long-term longevity of this business. The internal crystalline structure of the MOV is what gives the MOV its electrical characteristics. Hubble controls this structure by design. At the microscopic scale, the MOV is predominantly zinc oxide crystals formed during a high temperature sintering process. The boundaries between the crystal grains are where the majority of electrical performance characteristics are established. The live additives at the crystal grain boundaries provide the switch-like behavior of the MOV. These additives include oxides of other metals such as bismuth, cobalt, nickel, and chromium. Given the complexity of producing high-quality MOVs, a long sequence of steps must be tightly followed from start to finish. So, how does Hubble make the highest performing MOV in the industry? We have total control over the process, the materials, and, and everything about it. I, I think what most users don't realize is there is no standard in the industry for the MOV disc. There is not one word in any standard that tells you how to make this disc, how do you assure it's manufactured right. The, the arrestor doesn't work if the block isn't made right. The block isn't made right if you don't use the right material and you don't process it the same way. Uh, the materials that go into the MOV are very important. The quality and consistency of the raw materials go hand in hand with maintaining the physical and the electrical properties of the block. Some of the feedback I do get from vendors is, you know, why do we do all of this testing when they're certifying the material? You know, why can't we just go off their cert? And it's because we want to make sure, very sure, that we have good quality material going into our product. So the main tests we run in the laboratory are particle characterization, which is particle size, distribution, surface area, and x-ray diffraction to look at the crystal structure, and also ICP to look at the impurity levels of the materials. The timeline from incoming material to finished MOV electrical testing is 25 days. 
Because of the long duration and complexity of processing, the cost impact of variations must be minimized by a significant number of quality checks throughout production. Finally, the incoming raw materials are released to production and begin the first phase of processing. The ultimate purpose of forming a liquid slurry is to mix and disperse all additives at a perfectly controlled ratio with the zinc oxide and with perfectly sized particles. The ingredients are weighed into mixing tanks where they are combined with ball-shaped grinding media to break down aggregates. Once complete, the balls are removed and the ingredients are transformed in a high heat process known as calcining. The products of the calcining step are then dispersed into liquid phase again where quality checks monitor the viscosity and particle size outcome. In the next phase, the liquid slurry is transformed within large drying vats into a powder of small uniform particles by flash drying in a spray of hot air at high pressure. The particle size distribution of the spray dried material is controlled during the run. The particle size and dryness of the powder affect the ability to press the powder into disc shape during the next phase and are analyzed before proceeding. The spray dried powder is compacted within hydraulic cylinders to a specific density. The hydraulic presses incorporate sensors to ensure each disc is consistent and has no bubbles or uneven stresses. At this point, the newly formed discs are tough enough for light handling even though they are only compacted powder. The height, weight, and shape of the discs are checked throughout the batch to ensure the discs are pressed to the correct density. Racks of pressed MOVs are loaded into low temperature ovens and baked to remove the organic materials for 24 hours. Once the MOVs cool, they are ready for crystal growth in the high temperature kilns. Each MOV is carefully loaded into a ceramic carrier box for transport through the kiln. It will take approximately three days for each MOV to travel the entire length of the kiln and return to the loading position. During this time, the zinc oxide crystals will grow in a process known as sintering. Precise crystal growth requires high temperatures for specific lengths of time. Hubble controls the crystal growth with precision controls that increase the final disk density 13%. This is how the MOV transforms from a pressed powder into a semiconductive solid state material with high voltage reactive properties. Once the discs have cooled, they are visually scrutinized for defects such as chips and cracks. During sintering, an insulating layer forms on the outside of the disc. Hubble augments this layer by adding a coating that improves and raises the electrical insulation level. Once this collar is baked and hardened, the circular faces of the discs undergo precision grinding to expose a conductive surface of the crystalline MOV. The height, surface finish, parallelism, and perpendicularity of each block is measured. Any defects must be corrected at this stage by re-grinding the disc before the finishing step. The final layer seals the circular faces of each disc with a conductive layer of metal. The metal layer becomes the contact point between MOV discs and other components within the surge arrestor. The proper application of this layer is the most critical final quality step in manufacturing the MOV. After the metallizing step, Hubble qualifies each and every new MOV with a 100% rated energy test. The larger the diameter of the disc, the more energy impulses it must withstand to prove it meets Hubble standards. This pass or fail test was devised by Hubble engineers to guarantee there are no flaws in all new MOV discs. Any internal flaws such as pinholes or cracks and any external flaws like chips, bumps or other imperfections and the MOV may be violently destroyed. Only the strong survive. Once the MOV passes the rated energy test, it is cooled before the routine classification test. The electrical protection, known as residual or discharge voltage, must be precisely measured with a lightning impulse at a specific level. The voltage measured during this test is printed directly on the MOV next to its batch identification. The result is used to sort and package discs into groups of similar values. The exact value will be used at the arrestor factory to match blocks to specific arrestor designs. But before the discs are released for shipment, the entire batch of sorted MOV discs is set aside for additional testing. Sample discs are selected for quality assurance tests to determine the properties of the batch. 
Because Hubble engineers devised a sequence of testing that gets more and more difficult, some disks must be sacrificed and are destroyed during testing. The main batch of MOV disks will be released only when quality assurance targets are satisfied. First, disks are energized at routine operating voltages to analyze the small amount of power they will consume compared to the maximum protection they provide. This is also known as a Watt's loss test. When the power consumption under routine conditions is known, the overall lifetime of the MOV can be predicted by placing the disk under extreme conditions to simulate accelerated aging. Large ovens are used to heat the MOVs for a week or more while the power consumption is observed. Hubble MOVs normally consume less and less power over time, and MOVs that do not follow this trend of long-term stability are rejected. At nearly 100,000 amps, the high current test hits an MOV disk with the biggest lightning impulse of its lifetime, twice. This ensures performance at the highest current impulses is consistent. Hubble engineers designed the energy capability test to push MOVs to the breaking point with massive jolts of energy hitting during the most vulnerable moments of the high voltage response. This tests the ability of the millions of switch-like crystals within the disk to work together uniformly. The test continues to higher and higher levels until the disk is destroyed or the generator equipment reaches maximum. The batch of MOVs is graded according to the highest level achieved. Once the quality of the MOVs has been assured, the shipment of the finished product is scheduled. Producing MOVs is a core competency that Hubble supports with a large capital investment and a dedicated team of technical experts. To date, we have manufactured over 100 million MOV disks installed into over 35 million surge arresters. And having the MOV team, the arrestor design team, and the electrical power laboratory in Wadsworth drives a continuous effort to maintain the high quality surge arrestor that we sell. Hubble's product means the top of the market. Our customers deserve that and they should expect nothing less. Great quality control and great quality parts. That's the Hubble difference.